Um, let me just explain, that, first of all, what, that's one of the real appeals to me about using liberating structures. That I've had a chance actually to use, it, use them in various cross-cultural contexts, and I really like how they, they, they seem to be able to transfer into different cultural contexts. Um, and, and maybe it's part, part of the reason for that is that they really draw on different learning modalities. So it's not just uh, you know, your oral skills that, uh, that come into play, but also you know, some of the activities involve kinesthetic components. They, you know, they, they involve obviously visual components as well. So um, I think that that makes them in some ways easier to, to uh, port over into different cultural contexts. So I, you know, I've worked with them uh, worked with liberating structures in, with Chinese school administrators, uh, Chinese university students, younger students, um, Brazilian university presidents, as I, as I mentioned, and of course our, our domestic students. And I've had a chance, one of the, the activities that I found really, really powerful, one of the structures, is the user experience fishbowl. And I've used that both with our domestic learners and my, my master's learners in China. And in one example would be, um, we're working with a blended residency. So we have an online free residency component, a two week face-to-face -face component, and then a three or four week post, online post-residency component. So during the face-to-face -face component, fairly close to the beginning, I've used the user experience fishbowl to help um, understand, for me and our learners, understand what the online pre-residency experience was like for our learners. So the way I framed it is, is actually using the, uh, the phrasing that, that Henry and Keith have, have suggested, and that is, the question was, you know, what, 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 what was the good, bad, and ugly of your online learning experience? And it, so that's the other thing I really like about them. You can add a little bit of, you know, like a, just a little bit of a fun edge to, to the implementation process. But anyway, the way I set it up is I had um, five, five chairs. So I had five students um, in the center of the fishbowl with a sixth chair that uh, was unoccupied. And then we all stood around the, the fishbowl, and I, I asked uh, the learners to think about, you know, basically to think that they were in a um, cafe or a relaxing habitat after, um, after class, and they're just talking about their, their informally, their, their pre-residency experiences. And um, the sixth chair was really intended for people from the outer circle when a particular point was made by the other one of the other five learners, and they thought they could they, they wanted to make a contribution. They could come in to the circle, make their you know be able to to add to the discussion, and then step back out and, and allow another student to come in. So what I liked about that that model is just it allowed a little more fluidity between the inner circle and, and the outer circle. One of the, the challenges, though, with liberating structures, and it's, it's not really, it's not a challenge, it's just more of a caution, and that is because they do involve different ways of communicating and, and sharing, um, we have to be mindful of what kind of reaction and response um, a learner has and to the activity and what, what they need to do to be able to process their experience. So one of the things that I've, I've learned is that is to think about what happens after you're using liberating structures. What's the next step? And so, and that's where a string becomes really helpful because I've integrated the use of both the one, two, four, all as a way of debriefing what happens in the fishbowl. So basically, you know, using the question, so you know, you know, uh, you know, what do you, would you take away from that experience, and what are the implications for us as a, a learning community in terms of ensuring that we can continue to build, you know, a successful learning experience for everybody in the class? Um, so it's a great opportunity for people to to engage in some reflection about what they heard in the in the fishbowl, or what they contributed to the fishbowl, or both.